Uh, I would like to move on and give the floor to Mr. Dogliani, uh, who will be talking to us about this 10 project in Mostar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good uh, morning, everybody. Ole, <laughs> here we are. So, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here in Athens. It's a pleasure to be at the European Maritime Day. I've been uh, almost all the European Maritime Day as a speaker, and it comes to be an addict. Eh? <laughs> Compliments for this. Now, uh, Richard, I have a question for you. Uh, uh, I think uh, I think you are another architect. I am another architect. Just uh, before I forget, um, a fuel for this VLCC, 20 million. Which is the cost of the VLCC without? So we are speaking 20 percent. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I'm speaking uh, on behalf of the Italian Minister of Transport. Uh, uh, which uh, participated directly in this project uh, and uh, which coordinated the project. Uh, I am from the Italian Ship Classification Society, I am a naval architect, but uh, the reason why I mention this is that this uh, for Italy is a strong policy priority in transport. And today I will not speak about ship, I will speak uh, of uh, transport policies. Now, this is the outline. Costa project uh, was already concluded. Just one mistake. Even today, we are seeing tomorrow. No, the problem is not tomorrow. Hmm? Is today in the Baltic? Okay, is 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 done. The problem is 2020 in Europe, red area. This is 0.5 percent. 2025, most likely, not 2020, all over the world. So. Forget the world if the ship is traveling in acre. In 2025, it's 0.5% all over the world. And that is what we, Ministry of Transport Policy, are aiming to. COSTA was, in fact, a study and was aiming at answering the question what we have to do to be ready in 2020 and in 2025. Partners very good cooperation, thanks to those who worked with us, some of them are here. First concept, hmm? said already, the cost of fuel on board, forget the cost of LNG, Richard said already, and the, the big amount of cost is the cost of distribution, hmm? the investment and so forth, this is the thing. The result of Costa, is everything clear? Well, 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 well. More than 100 ships already going on LNG or on order. These are figures one year old. Now we are again more or less 140. So it's not a problem building a ship on LNG. Rules and regulation even too much. Again, we are speaking with a 2020 perspective. IHF code and a lot of other things. Okay. Environmental concern, yes, there are other complementary things. I just take uh, advantage of this to mention one thing. I am a simple guy. Eh? Scrubbers is fantastic. For me, it's uh, difficult to understand that in order to not pollute, I use more fuel. Because scrubbers require more fuel. This is not the solution in the long term. Okay? But there is a lot of other things, a lot of nice combination, etc., etc. Good. Logistic, uh, social. Social is, is an issue, at least in Italy and a few other countries. Simple citizens, they don't want to listen to the word LNG in the town. So this is going to be an issue. And fortunately, the Commission is addressing this also through this website and so forth. Financial, yes, 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 yes. The differential of cost and so forth. Now, again, don't think tomorrow. Don't think that in the last six months uh, the cost of fuel reduced greatly. Our aim is 2020. And the cost of fuel probably by that time will increase again. And the, the, the logistics, the infrastructure. We know exactly how to do it. It has been done. But uh, what about the Mediterranean? Do you see any green spot there? Green spots are infrastructure where a ship can refuel, not, uh, not one in the Mediterranean. And it does not take one, one day to build. Eh? Second thing, 
now starting some consideration about transport policy. What happens in Italy if we, in 2020, have to use marine diesel oil with the prices of six months ago? It's very easy. Eh? We increase our congestion on the road because simply the traffic will move from ship to road. Congestion in Italy costs already 40 billion euro a year. We cannot sustain this. This is not in our transport policy. We have to find a solution, probably LNG, any other, whatever. But that is not going to be a solution. And if we congest Italy, sorry, our European corridors will be very congested. So we have an issue here, of course. Another issue. Now we are in 2025, and we are, everybody is, uh, I hope, as you, that mainly go on LNG. We need to pit stop somewhere, eh? because you cannot cross the Atlantic on LNG. You cannot even cross the, the Mediterranean on LNG. You have to refuel some, somewhere. Where do we put a refueling station? Maybe in the Azores. Shall we pay for it? We, Italian, need this. Our flagged ship will need this. Shall we pay for it? Shall Portugal pay for it? Shall we do in some territory of US? This is not an issue that we solve in isolation. Similar consideration for Mediterranean. Already touched. Training, training. Training is not very... Uh, we are not worried of training personnel on board ships. Even if uh, we are speaking of a couple of million of people. Eh? We are not worried of that, because there is already some IMO standards, we are used to this. What we are worried is that we will need to train, for instance, people in the terminals, and there is no IMO for terminals. There is not a common skill all over the world. So what we worry is that we find different requirements for different skills depending on the country or even the port. And then the poor ship owner needs to comply with a lot of confusing things. This is worrying. And for this we have to work. So, 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 back, back to Costa. Another important point is how much fuel we need, where, and this and that. And a, a huge, a huge study was done, mostly by Fondation Valencia Port. Eva Perez is here. And this book was uh, developed. By the way, is available. Basically, what we did in this study, we considered all each single ship which is engaged in short sea shipping in the Mediterranean. Costa is about the Mediterranean, and certainly liners will be the first to go on LNG. Why? Because they are connecting two ports, a few ports always. So I find LNG here or there and then I go LNG. All the other will have to wait that there is a network. So each and every one was modeled, was considered, and there has been a lot of analysis. I cut it short. Let's have a look. Of, of course, depending on the hypothesis, etc., 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 all is written in this book, which will be the most uh, demanding part in terms of LNG needed. Is a good news for you, perhaps. Piraeus. The second largest as a demand will be Valencia, and then Barcelona, I think, and then Genoa, finally, also in Italy. So those four will be the biggest as a demand, according to all the hypotheses that we had to do, which were not few. So this gives quite an, an idea of, of what our 2020 is likely to be. Send an email there, or ask Eva, and this book, which is a big book, is, is for you. And maybe we can put uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the website. There's plenty of good information. But pay attention, read the hypothesis, because we have to make a lot of hypotheses. Now, is this the end? This is the last page of the book. Is this the end? No, 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 no. This is just a, the, the beginning. Now, very quickly, I tell you what is Italian Ministry of Transport policy on this. Is this. 
We expect we are building our LNG infrastructure. Without the infrastructure, there will be no LNG for ships. We cannot ask the ship owner to make a decision on the basis of not knowing when, where, and at which cost they will find the fuel. So this is our expectations. This is uh, what we are trying already to do. Also answering the alternative fuel infrastructure directive, which, this is a very good news, is asking each one European member states by 16 November 2016, keep this in your diary, that by that day we all member states will have to tell where and when and what we do. So in which port, when and which type of refueling facilities if, if any. Okay? Similar things for road, etc. 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 So this Alternative infrastructure directive is very important and is very useful. Ship owner will have something to base on their judgment on. This is what we expect to have in 2020. And this we call the Gain Italy Initiative. We who? Italian industry. These are all the partners already committed to, the, to do that. And uh, we hope we will do. We have also a few stakeholders, fine, and we have cooperation, because this, I repeat, is this matter of fuel to comply with the sulfur directive, then today I think is LNG, if tomorrow is another thing, whatever, uh, I think it is going to be LNG, but whatever, this matter cannot be dealt with in isolation by a country. We have to do it together, at least at, Euro at the Mediterranean level. We have to involve also our friends from the North Africa. Okay? We have already agreed with those countries, common development. We have already agreed with our good friend from Poseidon Med, by the way, is a successor of Costa. And we certainly are going to agree with others. So, anything about this? future project, this ongoing development, this initiative, write to this email and we will be happy to try to answer your question. And now, the very last thing. I have been asked several times in the last year why the project is named Costa. Is it because of Costa Crociere? Is it because of Paolo Costa, who former uh, former uh, member of the European Parliament, the president of the Venice Port Authority? No. It's because the lady, Miss Costa from, uh, from uh, Liguria, she was one of the partners of the project, but she was determined in kicking off the project. She's speaking in another session. So thanks to everybody, thanks to Simona, and thanks uh, for you, and thanks to Iotis to go on with this important exercise. Thank you very much.